They titled the GOP's shameless plot against democracy. We look at what the Republican Party is up to. I mean, you've got uh, lawmakers from Texas having to flee the state because Texas wants to be the 18th Republican-controlled state to change their election laws. The uh, 28 voter suppression laws have already been passed in 17 states. They want to be the 18th state to change their election laws so that the partisans who run the legislature, the Republicans, can simply ignore or even change the outcome of elections. This is what President Biden was talking about yesterday. And I mean, you look at that and, and then you look at the, the Republican Party going all, all in on embracing white supremacy, on demonizing non-white people, on rejecting science, rejecting the climate emergency, rejecting vaccines, rejecting teaching science, evolution, and, and for that matter, history, the racial history of America in our schools and now there's this new effort from a whole bunch of different right-wing groups to block any additional funding to the Internal Revenue Service so that they can audit the tax returns of billionaires who are tax cheats, billionaire tax cheats. And they're packing the courts with, you know, corporations or people, my friend, oligarchy supporting judges. I mean, basically, big oil, big money, big pharma, big corruption. That's the Republican brand. And people are looking at it going, you know, where is this going? Who, what, you know, are these Republicans like following a plan? It's because when you watch the news and you catch this stuff, and particularly if you're watching, you know, the, the news that might actually be talking about some of these things, you, you, it seems like it's scattershot, right? It seems like the Republicans are just doing, oh, let's do this and let's do that and let's do this. And, and it's all kind of wacky stuff, but, but there's actually a playbook here. And we don't have to dig through, you know, musty old archives, uh, and we don't have to go back to watching the uh, documentaries about the rise of Hitler to figure out what's going on, because it has happened just in the last decade in Europe. And this, frankly, I think is the model for what the Republicans are doing here in the United States. And this is the, the Hungarian model. This is Viktor Orban. Steve Bannon famously said, Viktor Orban was Trump before Trump was Trump. And, you know, it's, it's very true. Uh, Viktor Orban rose out of relative obscurity back in, in 1989. In fact, uh, my friend uh, Jerry and I were in, in, in Budapest the, the summer that this all happened in Hungary. Now, Orban gave this speech to 100,000 people at the time, the Soviet Union still existed, but Gorbachev had opened things up with glasnost and all that stuff, and he was, you know, he was preparing to let Hungary have uh, free elections, which they did the next year, uh, in March of 1990. And this guy, this young guy, he was 29 years old at the time, Viktor Orban, he gets up and he gives this speech trashing the Soviet Union. He was the only speaker that day to do this. This was, you know, a, a kind of a national hero's day. It was like their 4th of July. That was in March of 1990. Vic, uh, uh, Hungary again became a democratic republic. Viktor Orban joined the parliament. In 1999, uh, Hungary was a fully functional modern European democracy. They joined uh, NATO in 1999. In 2004, they joined the EU, the European Union. For 20 years, Hungary was a functioning democratic republic. And today, it's a corrupt oligarchy. In just nine short years, from the time he was elected prime minister in 2010 until basically 2019, Viktor Orban, who became, during those nine years, fabulously wealthy, which is what happens with oligarchy, you know, with, with the people who do the bidding of the oligarchs in oligarchies, had taken over this party, this political party called the Fidesz Party. It was, you know, a sleepy conservative, it's sort of like the Republican Party was 30 years ago or 50 years ago. Uh, he took this over with the themes of, and I quote, restoring Christian purity and making Hungary great again. Those were the themes of his campaign. He campaigned on building a wall across the entirety of Hungary's southern border because these Syrian refugees were coming in. And by the way, he built that wall. He kept that promise. 
He altered the nation's constitution to, pro to provide for what we would call gerrymandering and voter suppression so that his party would win every election. And sure enough, they have. He's packed the courts, particularly Hungary's Supreme Court, so thoroughly that any kind of legal challenge against him just goes. They, he just recently, just in the, last, in the last year, has passed laws requiring, uh, quote, conservative sex education in their public schools. Uh, the essence of the sex education is gay is bad. I mean, that, you know, you could sum it up in those three words. Um, and in fact, in uh, public campaigns from the government in Hungary, they are conflating homosexuality with pedophilia. And uh, the latest anti-gay law, which passed the Hungarian parliament just a few months ago, passed on a vote of 157 to 1. Is, are you starting to hear echoes? I mean, it, the, it, does this sound like familiar? His party railed against multiracialism and racial tolerance. They re, literally rewrote their, their elementary school textbooks to say that, and this is a quote from one of their textbooks, refugees entering the country are a threat because it can be problematic for different cultures to coexist. And using that logic, he started locking up refugee children in cages. The Hungarian Helsinki Committee said, quote, the indefinite detention of many vulnerable migrants, including families with small children, is cruel and inhumane. Orban replied, Syrian refugees seeking asylum pose a security risk and endanger the continent's Christian culture and identity. Immigration brings, brings increased crime, especially crimes against women, and lets in the virus of terrorism. It's Trump's Mexican rapists, right? Five years and one week before Heather Heyer was killed in Charlottesville at that neo-Nazi rally, the, pretty much the same thing happened in Hungary. 700 right-wing so-called patriots marched with torches to the Roma. They used to be called gypsies. That's kind of a slur now. But they marched to the Roma community in Budapest with torches chanting, we will set your homes on fire. The chairman of the party, of Orban's party, referred to the Roma as animals unfit to live among people. Orban is handing out government contracts to his buddies, to the people who support him politically. He's created a whole new cl class of, of oligarchs. Those people who have opposed him politically, who are in business, have lost their businesses. And many of them have fled their country, have fled the country. Virtually the entire press of Hungary is now owned by a small handful of right-wing oligarchs who are loyal to Viktor Orban. They have hard-right talk shows on radio and television every day singing his praises. He has billboards talking about his patriotism. He's now, he and his media allies, they're now billionaires, they are now starting to buy media outlets across the rest of Europe to spread this right-wing racist message. He recently began dismantling the Hungarian Science Academy. He calls climate change, quote, left-wing trickery made up by Barack Obama. He, he, uh, he, he got, I mean, openly anti-Semitic. He's constantly going after George Soros, who, of course, was born in Hungary. He has fully reinvented Christianity in Hungary, now embracing hard-right factions within the Catholic Church, as well as evangelical Protestants. The Central European University just moved out of Hungary in the face of violent threats. This is a progressive Christian organization, school. Its rector said, there's no doubt that this is just an organized way of saying that Christianity means white conservative Europe. It's a trope. Say the word Christian and it says everything else you want to say, end quote. So what did Trump say to Orban when Orban, when he invited Orban to the White House? He said, uh, you've been great with respect to Christian communities. We appreciate that very much. But three months before Orban came to the White House to hang out with Donald Trump, he said, countries that accept non-Christians or non-white refugees are, uh, non-white refugees are producing mixed race nations. This, I mean, you know, before you say that the Republican Party is just randomly firing in weird directions and it's not going to go anywhere and they don't have a plan and there's no playbook here, I strongly suggest you consider getting on a plane and checking out Budapest or at least reading the piece that I wrote over at HartmanReport.com today and clicking through on some of the links. Every single claim that I just made literally every single one.
has a link that backs it up. This is not new, and we don't have to look at Hitler and Mussolini to see what's going on. We can just look at Orban and Hungary right now.